Guess who's back? Back again. JJ's back. Tell a friend. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? JJ's back. Hey guys, Pat here. So, what do I think about JJ Abrams coming back to direct Star Wars Episode 9? Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, to say I'm not happy. Um, that would be, that'd be an exaggeration. I'm not, like, mad or angry or upset, because, honestly, I, I don't really care that much about Star Wars anymore. Like, emotionally. Not that I don't care about it as a franchise, or that I don't want it to do well, or I, I don't, I dislike fans or anything. I still like Star Wars. Like, I just don't, I don't care that much. Like, if they made a bad Star Wars movie, if they made a really bad Star Wars movie, or, or a really mediocre one, um, like, let's say Han Solo comes out and it's just really mediocre. I really wouldn't care that much, because I'm just, I'm kind of getting over it. And I feel like Disney's producing so much Star Wars stuff so fast that they've, they've almost killed the brand for me. For me, I'm not saying the brand's dead, but I'm just burnt out on Star Wars after a couple years. And the fact that Last Jedi's coming out, and then Han Solo next year, and then the third film in the trilogy's coming out after that, and then, like, a Boba Fett movie... And a job of the Hut movie they're talking about doing, which is weird. Um, and then Yoda and Obi Wan Kenobi movie. Um, hopefully, you know, hopefully they're all good. I'm just kind of getting a little bit like I didn't really want to see this much of the Star Wars universe. I thought I did. I used to think I did when I read comic books that were based in the Star Wars universe and I watched cartoons. I used to think I want more of this. Turns out I really don't. Turns out that I, I was pretty satisfied personally with, with what we had gotten in Star Wars, and I didn't realize it. Um, but if anyone's excited about these new films and this new stuff coming out, more power to you. I'm not knocking you. You can have all the fun you want. That's cool. Um, let's just go through the history of this a little bit, and I'll try to give my perspective while I'm not too happy with this news. If you don't know, Colin Trevero got fired from Episode Nine. He directed Safety Not Guaranteed, Jurassic World, and The Book of Henry. The Book of Henry did very poorly at the box office and got pretty bad reviews, but um, for the for the most part, the guys had a pretty successful career. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of Jurassic World or anything, but it made 1.6 billion. Although I don't think he had much to do with that movie making that much money. I think that movie would have made money no matter who directed it. Um, but they say now now the reports are coming out from Vulture, which these are all just rumors. Don't take any of this like as legit literal like these are rumors but everyone's throwing them out there even major outlets movie outlets are saying these rumors so i'll guess i'll say them too um apparently they said colin trevero was hard to work with he was very arrogant or confident as they put it he uh he thought his ideas were better he apparently was really tough to work with on jurassic world but spielberg gave him gave him the go-ahead so nobody said anything and i guess on book of henry they said he was unbearable and then they said he kept changing the script to episode nine and he wouldn't listen to kathleen kennedy and um i don't know they, they they just make it like he has a huge ego and here's the thing you have to be confident to be a filmmaker i've made a lot of independent films and i can tell you right now even on that level you have to be confident when you're you're on a set working with people you have to be if you doubt for a second that you can't do this or that you're not good enough or that you can't be creative, you're going to make something really bad. Like you have to you have to rise up to the challenge, uh, quite frankly. But this sounds believable that they didn't like working with the guy. What's odd about this, though, is that they got along with him so well on Jurassic World from what I heard. That's what I thought. And I thought Spielberg really liked him. So I figured Kathleen Kennedy would like him and they would all like him. I didn't like him as a choice. I thought he was a very safe, boring choice for Episode Nine. Because I didn't want another generic film like Jurassic World with Episode 9. But I thought, yeah, from a business standpoint, I get it. And who knows who's writing the screenplay, you know. There was a lot of factors. You know, I don't just jump on the hate wagon. But apparently Kathleen Kennedy and, and the producers did. They didn't like this guy. Um, they didn't like Lord and Miller on the Han Solo flick. They didn't like the movie they were making. They got fired. Gareth Edwards wasn't back for his own reshoots except for one scene and really wasn't even involved in the editing of his own movie tony gilroy took over that and a lot of people ignore this jj abrams fought with kathleen kennedy um everyone who brings up kathleen kennedy and all these fights on the set they always ignored that force awakens the one film that was hyper successful you know they got they got great reviews and made a lot of money they always don't bring up that he was clashing with her at the time then too um jj Kathleen Kennedy's had a confrontation with uh, almost every director they've worked with so far, outside of Ryan Johnson, who was my pick, who I thought was going to come back for Episode Nine. 
Um, I threw out some names like, you know, Joe Johnston. Um, I heard some people say Jack Bender directed a lot of Lost episodes. Uh, Gilmero Del Toro. Um, there was a lot of names thrown around, but for the most part, it didn't really matter. Uh, it could have been anyone. These films were made by committee, in my opinion. It's just the proof's in the pudding. They, they can fire a director and bring in a new guy to reshoot a lot of the movie. I mean, that's kind of a committee thing. If they can just hire Ron Howard to come in and make his own movie after they were, they shot months of stuff, that means that it never really mattered who the directors were. It didn't matter. That means that there wasn't one creative vision that was happening. Uh, same thing with Rogue One. Same thing with uh, this this movie. They didn't like where the script was going. That means they don't have a script or story figured out. I don't even know if they have Snoke figured out yet. I, I wonder if everything J.J. Abrams came up with in that first movie, if they had no idea. I've had that theory since then that him and Lawrence Kasdan had no clue what any of that stuff meant, that mystery stuff, where people go, what, what about Ray and all that? I don't think they knew. I really don't. I think they had not one idea where any of that stuff was coming. I think they just threw stuff in there to be cool. Um, with time, I found Force Awakens to to have been de to have uh, not held up very well. I think all the criticisms thrown upon it by, let's say, a Max Landis when it came out are pretty valid criticisms. Ray is an underwritten character. There is a lack of logic from scene to scene. Um, the humor is not hitting at all fronts at all. The it does. It's a pretty funny movie, but like the drama's not really there. The pathos isn't there. Han Solo's death kind of sucks. It really does. It's poorly directed and thought out. Um, a lot of mediocre acting and moments here. There's some great acting. Oscar Isaac's really good as Poe. Uh, I thought Adam Driver had some good moments as Kylo Ren. Harrison Ford gives a very good performance throughout the movie. Uh, but it was a mixed bag. There was a lot of stuff that was taken from New Hope. And it was a reboot. It was more of a reboot than a sequel. It was kind of a hidden reboot, which I didn't mind. I would have Part of me just kind of would have wanted a reboot of Star Wars, where he just followed Rey, Finn, and Poe, and just left out the old characters, because what they did with the old characters made it feel weird as a sequel. It's like, wait, so we're going to go 30 years ahead into Star Wars, and Luke Skywalker is depressed and lonely and hates life, basically, and failed at everything, and Han Solo and Leia got a divorce and basically failed at everything at raising their son. I mean, it's... It, it just doesn't feel right. The ending of... It, I'm not saying that you can't have darkness after the happiness of, of, of Return of the Jedi, but it's like there was never any happiness. It's like the First Order just came out of nowhere and then everything just started happening again. Um, and I, I didn't like that. I didn't like... It's not that I feel like we're owed Luke, Leia, and Han scenes or that we're owed, you know, them as the lead characters, but when it's called Episode Seven and the, the opening crawl starts with Luke Skywalker's name, basically, I did feel a little cheapened. Like, J.J. talking about all his love for the original trilogy and these characters and all that. And then he didn't really seem to care that much of them outside of Han Solo. Uh, which seems to be every geek guy's favorite character. But it's it's whatever. You know, a lot of people have complained about that movie. And a lot of people have defended that movie against the faults. Even though I don't think the defenses hold up. I do think Rey is too good at everything she does. I do think everything's too easy for her. I don't think Luke had that same... Ish. I don't think Luke was perfect. I think Luke was very whiny and flawed and made a lot of mistakes and grew from movie to movie. I don't think Ray did. By the end of The Force Awakens, Ray feels like a total, a complete, uh, you know, badass. Like, she feels like she's a fully formed superhero. Like, she can just beat anyone. I mean, she's, she's great at lightsaber dueling against Kylo. She, she can fly. She's a great mechanic. Uh, she figured out how to escape the whole thing by herself. She escaped... She didn't need anyone to come help her escape like Leia did. You know, aren't you a little short to be a stormtrooper? Nothing. She pretty much did everything. She didn't even need Finn's help. Anyone's help. Just, uh, or, uh, just that one scene where he helps her shoot something. She did most of the work flying the Falcon. She just does everything so well. She's so, she's so apparently smarter than everyone. She's wiser than everyone. She's braver than everyone. She's stronger than anyone. She's a better fighter, scavenger. Uh, she's, I mean, just all those elements. It's kind of... She even knows to, how to use the Falcon a little better than Han Solo. It's very odd. And I just don't think the defense of her character holds up. Oh, we saw her make bread. She made bread, so she's a good character. Uh, yeah, do you remember when she sat there and put the helmet on and we kind of thought, you know, it felt like a Miyazaki film? Yeah, that was like 10 minutes of the movie. Yeah, that was about it. Then she quit being a character once they left uh, Jakku. Everyone quits being a character in Force Awakens after the first, like, hour. It just becomes, like, uh... It becomes the biggest budget fan fiction film I've ever seen. With, like... And I've read better fan fiction, and I'm not, I'm not once again trying to say I'm better or anyone else is better, this film sucks, and people, because it's a fun movie. First Awakens is a fun movie. When you see it in the theater, it goes by really well, uh, it, you know, it's entertaining, it, it's got this nice, you get a high from it, it's, the opening crawl's great, uh, lots of nice little shot choices, and, and, um, 
the pacing's absolutely terrific, actually. It's got great pace at 135 minutes, but not one of my favorite films. Not a big fan. Just think it's okay. I think it's an okay movie. Uh, Rogue One I liked a little bit better. I thought Rogue One was a lot better, actually, in a lot of ways. I thought it had a more consistent tone. It had more consistent aesthetics. It had a better third act by far. I really don't like the third act of Force Awakens, and the third act of Rogue One's kind of awesome from a filmmaking standpoint. You may not like the characters because there wasn't a lot of character development. But, you know, we have two films that I think are pretty okay. So I'm not I'm not hating on these new Star Wars flicks. I think Rogue One and The Force Awakens are okay. Rogue One, I, I would even say, is a little better than okay. It has some really good things in it that, that did surprise me. Um, you know, in particular, in, in the ending, they did some things. I was like, oh, that's a really clever way to do that. That's really well thought out from a writing standpoint. Uh, maybe not the, maybe not in dialogue or characterization, but in action and what characters do. There, I thought there was the stakes were very high in that film. I thought there was a lot of tension from that. It's like, well, I don't need, necessarily need character development because they've done a good job of establishing the stakes in Rogue One. Right? I don't think the stakes are the stakes are all over the place in J.J. J. Abrams' movies. It, all of his films have that issue, I feel like, going back to Mission Impossible 3. You never know when it's supposed to be really tense and scary or when it's the end of something or when it's new. He just kind of... He just kind of flip-flops on those things and his bad guys and how tough they are. Um, so we have the history of the recent films. And Last Jedi, from all the reports that have been coming out, everyone apparently loves it. They love what Ryan Johnson has done. He's had a great relationship with the studio and they're happy with it. So all signs point for that to come out and be a successful movie. So we have that. Um, but here's the thing with Episode Nine, man. I wanted them to pick a new director. I don't want to be that guy, but I really wanted them to go somewhere else. Because if you're not going to have the trilogy have one vision where J.J. Abrams directs 7, 8, 9, and he says he regrets leaving 8, if you don't have his vision throughout all three films and ideas, that's fine. If you want to do the different director has a different vision for each film thing. Okay, but then you tried that and it's not working. So I'm just kind of confused by these Disney films. I don't, I don't get it. I get the separate films having different directors, but why did the original trilogy, these, this trilogy film trilogy series why'd you treat it like it was the the ot the ot it was never really planned to be that way it just kind of worked out that way that other directors made it this felt like they wanted different directors and i just don't get like hey ryan johnson's on this now he's a, more of an art house filmmaker and an indie guy that's very respected and he'll do this abrams is more of the blockbuster guy then they get colin trevero that's not really critically acclaimed as a filmmaker or loved as a blockbuster director it was very he was a he was a very odd choice honestly in retrospect um that felt just like hey jurassic world made money hire that guy um but at the end of the day i just don't i don't get the choice of abrams i don't think they need abrams i, I think actually the star wars brand and disney and everything that's the powers that be and all that behind it don't need jj abrams they don't need his mystery box they don't need him coming in with his generic blockbuster-esque direction where he directs you know action scenes that have the, the the cameras swoom swooping around i mean he really has no aesthetics the aesthetics that we know are the, a lot of moving camera weird angles uh the lens flares which he did not he didn't have that in force awakens but it was a lot of the same camera work he had in uh, the star trek movies it's like just swoop the camera around a character you know he's not he's not really an auteur or anything he doesn't have a distinct eye or visual style i like the look of abram's films i do i think the cinematography and all the films are pretty good and i do like his camera work but he does feel like a TV director that became a film director instead of a guy who started out as a filmmaker that went to television. Ryan Johnson feels like a filmmaker when you watch his stuff. His work on Breaking Bad still looks like a film. And I'm not saying Abrams' direction on Lost and the other stuff isn't terrific, but I still get this TV serial quality about it, which wasn't wrong for Star Wars. I've just always, I've always found his style to be a little too, it's too quick to give you things. It's, it's too immediate abrams abrams isn't a big fan of of the build-up of the tension of the letting shots linger on something and really let you think about them he's all about the boom 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 which you could say was george lucas in the original film that was kind of his style but i think as those films went on they kind of did find a pace though where things felt a little more organic and slowed down and there's those moments in force awakens but not as much as i would as i would like um i just think they could have hired a director who could have come in and worked on a script that could have been really great because this is episode nine. This isn't the first film to say to bring back the franchise and and make everyone happy to see everyone again and play it safe and make new fans happy and old fans. I get that. I get why they did all that in the first movie. I was a little upset Lawrence Kasdan's screenplay was so like meh, but it's still you know whatever. You know he's working on the Han Solo flick. Maybe that script's good. Who knows? 
But still, episode nine, the fact that they don't even have a total story yet or a script really bothers me. That means I, I feel completely like all the criticism about Force Awakens, them not knowing what the heck it was, is right. They didn't know what it was. It's like they just threw all the stuff at the wall, and some of it stuck, and some didn't. They said, okay, Ryan Johnson has to explain this now. Now, can J.J. Abrams pick up from Ryan Johnson and do what he does? Or, I mean, would it be that shocking to you if somebody is caught in this Episode Nine film, like in a prison plan, they're caught, and then friends go to save them, like Return of the Jedi at Jabba's place? It wouldn't shock me even slightly if J.J. did that. I'm not saying he's going to remake Return of the Jedi. I'm just saying it wouldn't shock me if he had straight-up scenes that are just total homages to those films. Like, entirely. Like, they're just, they're just, hey, look. Not even, just, they'll just be rip-offs, quite frankly. He doesn't even know how to do, uh, he doesn't even know how to do an homage. He just knows how to rip stuff off, quite frankly. It's like Super 8, the first half of Super 8. A lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool setup. Then you realize it's just nostalgia fest. Force Awakens is a product of nostalgia. I mean, South Park talks about this with the member berries. Like, Force Awakens is, is literally a commercial product built around nostalgia. It's fascinating in that way. Um, but like how David Lynch's Twin Peaks is about nostalgia recently and you can't go back to the past and returning and how you perceive things as to how they really are. There's not a lot of depth in these new Star Wars films unless Ryan Johnson brings it to Last Jedi with the stuff with Rey and Luke and there is some stuff that we don't know and I'm guessing he's going to. But man, can J.J. Abrams be the guy who's going to come in? He's kind of a, he's a really mediocre writer. Everything he's written on is his actual writings is super eight. The biggest issues with that flick are the script and choices in the third act. Uh, b biggest issues with the Star Trek films is, you know, he, he worked with uh, Orky and Kurtz, who kind of did okay, Kurtzman, who kind of did okay on the first film. But this End of Darkness has a terrible screenplay, particularly the second half with Khan and Benedict Cumberpatch and J.J. just straight up lying that it was Khan, even though everyone knew it was Khan. And then you go to see the movie and halfway into it, he says he's Khan and it's supposed to be a plot twist. And it falls completely flat because everyone going into the movie already thought he was Khan. It's like, JJ, are you kidding? JJ even came out later and was like, yeah, I think we screwed up doing that. We should have been more honest he was Khan. It probably hurt the movie. No crap, dude. It wasn't a good mystery. It was obvious what you were doing. And Khan shouldn't even... There's a lot of factors here because Tarantino brought this up, but I think it's a valid point. Chris, 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 Pine, Chris Pine and... <laughs> Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto and Zoe uh, Saldana and Simon Pegg, they're all playing younger versions of the characters from the original series. That, that The timeline's different, things have changed, but they're still those characters. He's nothing like Ricardo Montalban as, as Khan. He doesn't talk like him, he doesn't look like him. They changed all that stuff just because it was cool, because they wanted to work with Benedict Cumberbatch and they didn't want to create an original villain. Which, why not create an original villain? There's nothing wrong with doing that. People wouldn't have minded if you'd made up a new villain for your Star Trek film. But whatever. Uh, I'm not excited about Episode Nine as, as it currently stands because Abram's direction is just okay. But if he's writing the script, oh my god. And the fact that they have all these scripts being thrown around. I think they had the guy who, uh, god, I can't remember. They brought in one writer who's written nothing very Star Wars-ish, but he's a, he's a pretty good writer. Oh, uh, Chris Terrio. That's right. He wrote uh, Argo, which was a pretty good script, honestly. And then he worked on Batman v Superman that was a disaster, but I don't know how much he had to work on that film. And we're going to have to wait to see his work on Justice League, although I don't know how much that's going to hold up after the Joss Whedon rewrites. Um, and I think he was working on the Batman film, but I don't even know if he's working on that anymore. Chris Terrio might be a bit of a hack, or he can't write blockbuster stuff. So hopefully him and Abrams have an idea, but I'm just going to be blunt about this. I think it's a terrible choice. It's, it's, a, it's a safe, good business choice, but they didn't need to make a safe, good business choice. Everyone was going to go see this movie no matter who you hired. You could have hired a really great filmmaker that could have come in and made a film and, and perhaps, you know, honestly elevated this whole trilogy to another place. I'm getting the vibes we're going to get a Return of the Jedi. We're going to get a third film that's the safest one that's a little bit kiddie than the other ones. It has good parts. Don't get me wrong. The stuff on the Death Star and all that stuff's amazing, but a lot of, like, Oh, huh, these characters aren't as fresh as they were. I'm kind of ready for this to wrap up. You know, I, I'm getting a little worried we're going to get that. I mean, this is all, this is so similar to the trend of the original trilogy with Abrams and then him coming back to Episode Nine. is so much how Lucas had a huge hand in, in Return of the Jedi and making that movie. Some people claim even Ghost directed it, even though I don't think that's totally true. But I think he worked on a lot of that movie. And it's just so similar in that way. And I didn't want another Return of the Jedi type situation. I like Return of the Jedi a lot. It's a good movie. Honestly, I'd even argue it's borderline a great movie. There's there's great scenes in that movie. 
that are as good as anything in Empire and New Hope. There's sequences that are terrific. It just lacks a, a vision throughout, basically. But man, Abrams coming off after Ryan Johnson. Are we going to go see Ryan Johnson's movie? It's going to look different. That you know, the lighting and and all that, the way he shoots his films, the 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 dialogue's going to be a lot snappier and clever because he's a better dialogue writer than Abrams. And then we're going to go into episode nine. It's going to be a J.J. Abrams film again. Does no one find that jarring? Because three different creative visions, at least, is that you see three different directors coming in at another thing. Abrams is going to do what he did before. Abrams' aesthetics don't evolve. Abrams been using the same aesthetics forever. They don't they don't change or adjust or anything like that. Like Force Awakens looks like Mission Impossible three. It's the same thing. It, it, he does the same kind of camera work and and, and and lighting for the most part. Just just slight differences because what he was shooting with and the fact that it was Star Wars and the practical effects of all. But I don't think he did a good job of lighting and framing a lot of the practical effects. They didn't look as good as they should have and they could have. Um, I just, God, I wanted someone else to come in here. You know, I just wanted someone else to come in that had a different eye, that had a different sensibility, a different sense of humor. Uh, that that like the original trilogy in a different way. Maybe somebody that was more of a veteran like a Ron Howard that was older, you know, that had been working in the industry a lot longer than J.J. J.J.'s too modern and internet-y. Like too, you know, s oh, let's set up mysteries for people to try to figure out on the internet and all that, you know? I, I Instead of just telling a classic adventure story like I think the third film should probably be, episode 9 doesn't need to be anything more than a wrap-up that's very satisfying as an operatic story. And I don't know if Abrams is the guy to pull that off. I really don't think he is, actually. But I, I hope I'm wrong, and I could be wrong, definitely. And I hope I am. It'll certainly make money and probably get like 95% on Rotten Tomatoes because it's just one of those things. But that doesn't mean that I have to love it. And this is my channel, and I'll talk about things the way I want to. And uh, I'll just say, so now Disney's been really bad at picking the directors for these Star Wars flicks. They've been outside of Ryan Johnson. All the other picks have been terrible. Gareth Edwards was a bad choice. Um, he isn't a very good filmmaker. He's just a visual guy. He's basically a glorified, uh, basically glorified se cinematographer, second unit director. The guy has no sense of directing actors or story or trans. I mean, he just doesn't. You watch his movies, even his first film, Monsters, is terribly handled as a piece of storytelling. Uh, Lord and Miller hiring them to do what you wanted to be a western Han Solo film. You hire two guys who make parody, spoof comedy films, and then you're upset they did a comedy. Why did you hire them? Um, Colin Trevero, of course this was going to happen. I just don't get If you knew you didn't like the guy, why did you even hire him? This is so confusing. Like, it's, I don't get, the, like, when they hired the Russo brothers to do Winter Soldier, we were like, what? And then you see, and you're like, oh, that's why they hired the Russo brothers. And the people that are getting to come over to those films, like Ryan Coogler and James Gunn, they got some good names on those films. I mean, even, even Peyton Reed, who directed Ant-Man, you know, he's not Edgar Wright, but he's still a pretty decent director, and he did a good job. Like, they, they still find out-of-the-box choices you don't necessarily think of. J.J. Abrams was an obvious choice. Uh, Gareth Edwards, like, oh, let's get the guy who did the Godzilla film to do a war film. Uh, uh, Colin Trevero was obvious. The only one that hasn't been obvious that kind of came out was Ryan Johnson. Where it was like, oh, cool, Ryan Johnson, the guy who did Brick and stuff, he's doing this. That's kind of cool. Directed break, some Breaking Bad episodes. That's pretty neat, but at the end of the day... Uh, my, my biggest issue with this is that I think they're going to make this trilogy just fall flat on its face. And these new Star Wars films in retrospect are going to be, you know, they started off pretty good, then they lost their momentum, and then they kind of got it back and forth, and then, huh, then people quit buying the toys as much, then people quit buying the merchandise as much, and then eventually, as uh, Star Wars just wasn't as cool as it was, and the kids growing up weren't inspired by it like the kids who grew up watching the old Star Wars. And I think we're kind of in the world. I think what inspires young people today was probably Harry Potter was their thing. Or now Game of Thrones is probably inspiring. Maybe not little kids, but it's more inspiring people. Or or just a lot of other things out there. Things have changed since Star Wars came out. Everything, it's not the same world anymore. Star Wars isn't the one franchise that can take us to another world and make us feel things that we haven't felt before. Or, or tap into through our greatest love of, of heroes and characters and journeys and, and storytelling. Um, plenty of franchises do that now. Plenty of movies do that now. Abrams is just another director that's that's trying to be one of those classic filmmakers from back in the great era of the the seven the late seventies eighties blockbuster. I feel that from a lot of directors. I prefer you just hire a filmmaker that wants to make a movie and has a movie idea and let them make the movie, and forget about the franchise crap. I mean, I'm serious. Like the reason that Star Wars the original trilogy works so well is because they did take risks for the most part. Maybe not in Return of the Jedi so much, but they did take risks in those first two movies. New Hope was a gamble. That film could have been a disaster and bombed. The money they had in it, the, all the footage they shot. 
Um, Empire Strikes Back, they took so many huge risks on that movie. It's what made it solidified is that they is that they tried new things and kept changing things. If they don't do that with these Star Wars films, if they just try to repeat what we've seen before, or if they try to play it safe, people are going to fall out of love with these movies fast outside of the, the crazy fanboy fanatics and fangirls that just love anything with the lightsaber in it, the people who love the prequels and stuff like that. That's that's a, that's not going to last forever. Um, you might you might be getting you know videos twenty years from now people ripping apart these new Star Wars films if you don't handle it now. I'm not saying Kathleen Kennedy's the problem, but she does seem to have a bad relationship uh, with a lot of these filmmakers immediately, and she does seem to be a good producer in the sense that she's willing to fire people and change things for a vision. But maybe someone else should be helping Kathleen Kennedy on some of these movies. Uh, maybe maybe we need some uh, Frank Marshall you know, type of person in there. Maybe Spielberg could come in and work on a couple of them. I think we need a little bit more producer, more producer, maybe even Abrams producing them. I think Abrams is actually a much better producer than he is a director. I think he'd be a better producer on these, actually. He'd probably hire better directors. Think about the guys he found. He found Matt Reeves. You know, he got he worked with Matt Reeves. People are like, oh, Cloverfield? And then that guy's doing the Apes franchise now and Batman and is a wonderful director, has a great eye. Um, Dan Trachtenberg, he hired to do Cloverfield 10 Lane after Damien Chazelle who went on to do Whiplash and La La Land, and Dan Trachtenberg's got a great style, and that movie is really well directed. I mean, J.J.'s got a good pick. He finds good directors. The people he picks to write and direct on his films, for the most part, are pretty good choices. Um, and a lot of the people he's worked with throughout the years, the teams that he's worked with, are great. Uh, he's worked with some really talented people. So I have... I have no issues with a Abrams being involved, but man, put someone else behind the camera. Please take the risk and let Episode Nine be that film that Star Wars can be and take this trilogy out on the note that it can be. Abrams is not going to do that unless he throws away all of his, you know, all the stuff he does as a filmmaker. If he throws out everything that's him as a filmmaker, if he does some reinvention thing where he changes everything, because I just don't see it. I don't see how it won't just be another J.J. Abrams films. Like, that's all of his movies. None of his films are great. None of them are above like a 7 or 7.5 at best. Even a Star Trek film that a lot of people love. It's still got a lot of terrible plot holes and, and, and dialogue and jokes. And it's just really, it's really fun. And the cast is really good. In fact, I prefer that movie to Force Awakens quite a bit. Even though it's a terrible Star Trek movie in the sense it doesn't really capture what Star Trek was about. But it's a, it's a really fun action movie. Um, I think that's all Abrams can do is fun action movies. Oh, once again, Mission Impossible franchise. He eventually got Brad Bird to come on and do four, and then Christopher McQuarrie to do five, which I think four and five are two of the best movies in that series. Abrams is a dang good producer, man. Like, it's it's right there. Look at the stuff he's produced, and it's better than most of his movies. Um, so I'd say the idea here is bring Abrams in more as a producer, and I wish they would have let someone else direct it, but the contracts are being signed. It's over. J.J. Abrams is back. For better or worse, I guess, the return of the J.J., I don't like it. I think it's a bad choice. I really do. Um, creatively, artistically, not financially. Um, but I'm. why would I care about the finances? I'm not making any money off this movie, so I'm just going to talk about what I feel. Yeah, hire a different director. Take a chance. Do something interesting. Marvel did. Marvel did with the Russos. I knew you guys think, oh, we did with Lord Miller. You really did it. You haven't, you haven't thought outside of the box for one of these movies yet. And that's really worrisome for the future of this franchise. Anyway, leave your opinion in the comments section. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Don't try to fight or anything. Just tell me what you think and, and articulate it the best you can. I am interested in your point of view. I don't want to get in some fight with you. Everyone always wants to fight in these franchise things. Oh, you didn't like Batman v Superman. You didn't like Force Awakens. I hate you. Dude, not everyone has to like everything. It's cool if you like it. J just talk about why you like it and maybe I'll understand a little bit better. It's not always about arguing because you don't get anywhere with those arguments because then you just get more set in your ways of what you think is right um so please just leave your opinion and let me know i'm interested i really want to know what some of you guys have to think you guys say stuff all the time in the comments that i never thought of uh like please like this video and subscribe subscribe this channel's pretty awesome i mean come on guys like i'm better than a lot of the other the movie normie channels out there you know at least i have a sense of humor and uh I don't just kiss the butt of every movie franchise out there. I don't just worship them blindly. Like, oh my god, JJ's back. JJ's my hero. I can't wait for another Force Awakens. I thought Rey was so cool. How she could fly everything and then she like cut Kylo Ren down and bam, 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 bam. No. And uh, that's all. And also, please rewind your VHS tapes before you take them back to the store. Okay? It's, it's really rude of you to, to just leave them like that and expect the employee to do it. You know? 
Just just picture poor little J.J. Abrams at the video store having to rewind that tape you brought him in of regarding Henry. Think about that for a second. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.